we go. Cool. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for your uh, patience with us. I'm uh, Councillor Daniel Fitzhenry. I'm the leader of Southampton City Council. And um, sorry, we're a bit delayed uh, this evening. Uh, we had uh, the platform we were going to use that we we're ready to go for six. The platform then went down and we've spent the last 15 minutes trying to get it live again. But here we are. So our plan for this evening to spend sort of 45 minutes to an hour answering your questions. Uh, from residents and people across the city on a wide range of subjects. Just a, a little rehash of the ground rules, really. Um, we won't be commenting on anyone's specific cases. Uh, and if there are specific personal questions, we'll, uh, in the chat, I'll ask the team to follow that up with you directly. Obviously, no political, uh, hugely political conversations is about issues. And um, of course, if anyone is completely difficultly rude, then we will um, ask you to leave politely. But otherwise, I'll do my best to answer all of your questions this evening and those that don't get answered, the team will follow up and answer for you. So um, hopefully that's helpful and we can bash through uh, questions uh, for you and give you some direction of where we're going. So I thought I'd do a little overview of what, what's gone on since the last time I saw you. And last, uh, a month ago, we had our first Facebook Live meeting, which was really, really successful. Uh, I think we had over a hundred odd questions and a, a, an awful number of people logging in and then some follow-up. So since then in the last month, we've been really busy as new council. We're pretty much in six months in now. Uh, we've launched our new 500K uh, community fund, which is a fund for people to organizations, charities, youth groups, um, community groups to bid for, to then have funds to help young people do positive things in their spare time, supporting sports and community groups. Um, whether that be boxing or, 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 or cycling or on the water or football or whatever else uh, activities. So we're working through that and that went live in the last week. The Christmas market is back. So you'll see the German Christmas market uh, is back and will be opening up over the next over the next coming week, I think ready for uh, this weekend. And unfortunately, we didn't get the Christmas Santa this year, but um, hopefully we'll be back on with that for, for next year. And since the summer, our pothole patrol team that are out, the pothole mole, the pothole TRX and pothole gorilla have uh, filled in over 1300 potholes and our roads program is live. So you'll see the Balfour BT teams with our teams out repairing roads and pavements all over the city and hopefully your road is being done for you. Um, we are in the last eight of the City of Culture 2025 competition. So Southampton is one of the last eight. Plan is to win. Uh, hopefully we'll know uh, that next summer. Um, we're working very hard on that at the moment because it's a competition. We can't, I really want to explain what it means for you and what, what we've got in it, but I can't right now because we're competing with other areas of the country. But I know that it's going to be a great opportunity for us and we're very committed to winning that. Freeport uh, bid continues, so hopefully our Freeport will go live next year. We're also tomorrow signing off our partnership, international partnership with Mumbai. Uh, in India to drive more investment and build new cultural links and support businesses. We have a, a, a twinning with Miami already. And uh, last week we had an Indonesian delegation over as well. So we're, we're looking at a twinning somewhere in the Middle East, really building strong international partnerships to showcase our city on the global map as a port city and as a place that's going somewhere. Uh, the thousand parking scheme, park, thousand parking spaces in our estates scheme. Um, we're going through the sites and analysing them. Over the coming weeks, we'll be outlining um, uh, where those sites will be to, 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 to let people know and then beginning the work on them. The 10 minutes free parking, so in our city centre, uh, to support the sort of smaller bits of the district on the outskirts of the city centre, you can park for 10 minutes for free, pop into the shop and get what you need. Heritage um, monuments, our walls, our vaults and, and uh, bar gate and all the memorials that we have spending over six million pounds upgrading those. Uh, and finally, uh, some of you will know that we've got a plan for delivering the Spitfire Memorial in Mayflower Park um, and investing heavily into Mayflower Park too. So it's all about destination Southampton, really getting our city on the map, showing what we can do, tidying up. I was with the fly tipping team this morning, talking to them about how we can improve fly tipping across this, the city, invest more into our parks and open spaces and really promote the best of our city and make us feel proud of our, of our home and all that we have to offer. So an awful lot of exciting stuff going on. It's great fun to be in this role as the leader of the council. And there are obviously days where there are challenging things going on as well, um, but uh, lots of opportunity and optimism for, for our city. So 
Uh, we have a first question, which I'll uh, go into. Um, John Lydiard, will the speed limit be returning to 50 miles an hour once the Millbrook Road is resurfaced coming into the city? That's a very good question, John. I'm assuming, yeah, the Millbrook Road, the um, Western Approach flyover, you mean. Um, it was 50 some years ago, and then it went down to 40. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but what I'll ask colleagues to do is um, find out for you and come back to you on that. Um, and I think you're referring to, yeah, the Millbrook Road Western approach from sort of Millbrook Roundabout up to the, toy, the old Toys R Us uh, route into the city. But we can come back to you on that. Thank you, John. Um, Molly, why was it thought a good idea to put a large electric billboard in the precinct attracting from the view of the bar gate, I think you mean? So I have some sympathy with you here, Molly. When I first saw th th this um billboard <clears throat> uh, electric billboard um got planning approval i think in 2019 i so had gone through the system was already being uh, installed and we we took control of the council uh in 2021 20, in may this year and the, it, it then got built out so it was already in play uh it shouldn't block the view of the bar gate because the bar gate is pretty big and when you're looking down the high street i know the german market there um uh is, is there at the moment. When you're looking down the high street, you can see it all, but it is about promoting, visually promoting our businesses and what's going on in the city, in, in the city centre environment. And we are looking at more of these big screens across the city. There was one specifically um, over the summer in front of the bar gate, but we moved that because it was, you know, very much in front of it. Whereas this is, you know, good, probably 50, 60 metres up might be, uh, might be more. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure it's, it, it wouldn't have got planning permission if it'd been significantly blocking the bar gate in terms of um, historic uh, monuments. Uh, but I understand your point. It's pretty big. It's right in the middle of the, the district, the, the city centre. Um, and I think it's going to take a bit of getting used to. But I do think once we've planted some plants around it and really advertise uh, what's going on, and in terms of the other things that we're doing in the city centre, I think it will be uh, a good thing for us. Um, but if we were starting from scratch, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm unsure whether I would have put it there, but it's it's now there and it was in train. Um, Louise Jones, how will the community fund help young people? Good question, Louise. So we put by half a million pounds um, for the fund over the first the, the next two years. One of the things that we were finding is we're going to get more police on the streets, so we should have over 150 more police uh, coming on our streets over the next couple of years as part of the, uh, we've already got a large number up to 70, 80 so far um, as part of the uplift that we're getting more police officers. And we're, we're also looking at how we can then um, target uh, working with our own council resources. So in, in areas where we've got the dirt bike issues, what can we do to build out, making it difficult to go in certain public land or private land? What, what bollards can we put in place, railings? We were looking at all those preventative sort of stuff. And also, you know, if people break the law, then, then they need to be held accountable. The community fund was about being preventative. So. 500 grand for community associations, community groups to bid for money to help support young people. So it might be young people who are legitimately doing nothing wrong and want to do something during the summer or want to do something all year round as, as a new sport. So uh, sports activities, football, cricket, um, water sports on, on, on the water, boxing, uh, gymnastics, yoga, whatever. Um, the money is there to help those community groups be able to provide activities for young people. Then obviously there are young people that perhaps doing things they shouldn't be doing, who have got a real skill, but the skill's being used in the wrong way. What the community fund then is for is for charities and organisations to have the funds to be able to provide something positive for young people to do. So if we look at what went on a couple of weeks ago in the Millbrook estate um, over the uh, um, Halloween, where large groups of young people gathering, what we want to be able to say to people is, look, if you're going to break the law, obviously, the police will will deal with that but actually what we want to be doing is encouraging people to do positive things for their life they've got maybe gone on the wrong step or maybe they're in with the wrong crowd or maybe they haven't got something positive to do let's work with the community let's work with organizations give them something positive to do let's put the funds in to do that and help them have a better chance and sometimes we will maybe do things or go down the wrong path where we don't really want to but if we're in with the right people that can give back to the community. So some of the elder people who might be who are running some of these organisations 
who really want to give back. We want to support those organisations to do really positive things in the community. And the community fund is there to give young people something positive to do and the funds to support the community groups to do that. And that's why it's set up. Uh, John, um, uh, Darren, uh, Darren L. L, sorry. Um, will Southampton ever get a music venue to rival BIC? Ideal location was Toys R Us site. Very disappointing to see the site sold to flats and offices. I agree with some of you there, Darren, but not, not all of it. Um, but I completely understand what you're saying. The answer is we're working on, so we are what we want to do in that area of redevelopment, we want to bring a new ice rink. Southampton's not had an ice rink or a snow dome or some kind of more sports activities um, for a number of years. Uh, it's a long standing issue and we want to resolve that. And we're chatting to people about how we could do that, who could who could provide that. Toys R Us site is, is right next to the train station and it's as you come through. So I agree with you that we need a music business conference center, something uh, and uh, just beyond flats and offices and homes. We do need flats, offices and homes, but we, that site there lends itself to a sort of key gateway, office complex and some residential. But the rest of that area that we're bringing forward plans for and working with, we want to have a business conference, music venue type activity, um, probably closer to the water actually, that no, leave the BIC behind and leave Brighton behind and really showcase what our city can do. So I agree with you on the sentiment. The location is already sorted. Toys R Us will be a really significant site and we want to work on the rest of that area to bring those sorts of things forward. But yeah, ab absolutely. Um, Rob Watkins, what's happened about the new Bargate development? Um, so the Bargate development has taken some time, has changed, COVID changed the dynamics of how much retail was in it. Then the housing changed. Uh, the Bargate development has been agreed and we'll, you will be starting to see activity on the site shortly. Um, so it will be progressing. Um, and uh, we are pushing forward, well, the developer is pushing forward a bit, and we've got, we've got everything signed off, ready to go from our end, um, just waiting for the developer to be able to, to get cracking, and that will be happening shortly. Um, David, hello, you took out... Uh, hello, you took out uh, our bin, and, and we video footage of it. We still want to charge me... So David, I think probably what you're talking about is we've taken your bin and then not replaced it. Maybe you mean video footage from your doorbell or, or camera. Um, if you, I'll get one of the team to pick that up with you specifically uh, with customer services about that and we can sort that out. I think that's what you mean. If anything different, please let me know. Um, but um, yeah, happy to uh, pick that up and understand further how we can sort that out for you, David. Thank you to, uh, for raising that. Uh, right, next question. Penny Jones, could we get a speed reduction smile signs by the cemetery in Butts Road showing people speed along this is a very straight, uh, reasonably wide, but with the cemetery and park, there are lots of pedestrians and school kids walking, so something needs to be done. Right. Um, I'm assuming, I'm just going to look at my, I know where Butts Road is, but just because it's a long road, I'm just going to bring it up, Penny. Um, Let's hope I haven't lost. Oh no, you are still there, <laughs> or I haven't gone anywhere. Uh, so you're by the cemetery. So you're at the bottom, aren't you? Coming down to Portsmouth Road. Yeah. So we are doing some um, safer road changes down the bottom um, of your road at the junction with Portsmouth Road. I'm not sure whether that's going to be a uh, speed involved speed sign. So I'm going to ask. Perhaps the team could pick up with you on that about the specifics of what we're doing at the bottom. So where the junction is with um, Portsmouth Road, where the roundabout is, I think there's some improvements to be taking place there, if I remember correctly. Um, but you might mean further up uh, Butts Road, going up towards the southeast road uh, uh, element. Um, I'm not sure. So what we can do, if, we, if, you, if you let us know, then um, we can clarify that for you, Penny. So thank you. We are putting in 20 mile an hour limits across the city. We've got a, a bid proposal open for people to um, put forward their request for 20 mile an hour. It, it probably wouldn't, it won't be on Butts Road because you're a main sort of road. 
it's more in the bit more residential pieces, I would think, but that application, no, it is at the bottom I'm talking about. Okay, so uh, let's check. Let's check what's going on there, Penny, because we are doing some road improvements at that junction with um, Portsmouth Road and Butts Road. So uh, I'll ask the team to come back to you with specifics um, uh, and then we can let you know what we're doing. Thank you, good question. Um, Amy, hi there. Parking is a major problem in the area of the estate, Harefield. I believe parts of the are getting some investment are parking. Ah, well, Amy, you'll be pleased to know, I'm, uh, although I lead the council, my ward is Harefield and the Harefield estate. We've been working on several parking proposals. Um, so one that's in play at the moment, if you don't mind just saying what part of the Harefield Estate, if you're happy to say what row on here, then please do so. If not, don't worry. Um, so we're working on a proposals for Cheriton Avenue. We're working on proposals for Meon Court. We were looking at some for Somerset. Um, we delivered some new parking spaces at the corner of Minstead. Are you on Bower? Yeah, thank you. Um, we delivered uh, some parking spaces on the corner of Minstead and Somerset more recently. Uh, I'm not sure Bower is in the... Uh, program let me just have a look so yeah i don't think you are specifically your road because melchit there isn't enough green space so what we're doing is we're taking the proposal is to take out bits of the green spaces i know you've got some green bits where you can park off road uh, and turn them into parking. There is some stuff we're doing around Bentley Green. Um, I haven't got the thousand parking. So we're delivering a thousand new parking spaces minimum across the city. Those will be in Harefield Estate. They'll be in the Western Estate. They'll be in the Fornhill Estate, Mary Oak, uh, I think, Estate a little bit, uh, Millbrook Estate, Redbridge Estate, Coxford, Swaveling, um, and City Centre. So they are all over the city. Um, but I haven't got the list to hand of where we're looking at, at the moment so what we'll do amy is we'll we'll come back to you i'll ask the team to uh come back to you on the specifics of where we are in Bowworth if you're on in the provisional program so we're just going through site we, we've got a list of roads but then get currently the engineers are going out and checking where they will be um yeah yeah, it, it, the reason we came up with it, I've just seen your lots of parking on verges, increase in drop curbs, parking is a nightmare on our road, yeah. And it's a park, uh, parking is a nightmare all around there. So as you, Exford, Chilcombe, Denmead, Melchett, um, and all of Bentley Green, and then of course Somerset. You, you will have seen that little one on the corner of Somerset and Minstead. We did, we did that more recently, um, but we're doing several more. So um, I'll get the team to take your details and then we'll come back to you on the specifics of where it is near you. But basically, it's taken out green verges that are muddy messes or really, as you probably know, ch churned up, putting down grass creek or concrete, um, rarely concrete to be fair, grass creek, tarmac, making some new spaces. And then also we're rolling out electric vehicle charging points across the city as well so that um, people can have electric vehicle charging points and we want to plant some more trees and make it look, um, uh, look really nice. Um, so that, that is in the programme. Uh, across the board, whether we're doing both with your bit, I'll, I'll find out for you. Um, but thank you, Amy. Good good question. And um, hopefully we'll be able to deliver lots of good parking for Hebel Estate. Uh, hello, Kim. Nice to, I'm assuming it's the same Kim. <laughs> uh, uh, could a road crossing be looked at again for the bottom of Vanguard Road and Whits Hill? Great to have one at the top, but dangerous to bottom. Yeah, thanks, Kim. So, um, yeah, you're right. We managed to, with your help and other residents of the, uh, it is you, I thought so, um, of the uh, SO18 group for Harefield, um, we managed to get the crossing at the top of Vanguard Road across Wits uh, Town Hill Way. Um, the bottom one is, is harder. Um, we are currently looking at um, actually one at the bottom of Town Hill Way, uh, and, and at the top of Megason Avenue, they're going to the school because there's, um, as you know, kids coming from the estate and we're re redeveloping uh, the estate, as you know well, um, that uh, the footfall there will be um, in increased. So we want to see how we can do that bit at the bottom of Town Hill 
way into Megaton. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, I'll make a note, Kim, because I've got your contact details and um, we'll pick up on the Wits Hill one. Um, I've got that one. I'll, I'll pick that up for you. Wits Hill. So we'll we'll come back to you uh, and see what if there's anything further that can be done. Um, right, Kate Fenton. As long as the charging cables don't impact the pavements, absolutely, Kim. Yeah, uh, sorry, Kim. Kate. Uh, Kate Fenton. Um, we won't be running cables over parking uh, over pavements. Um, there's some real good tech nowadays, actually, where you can um, you can use sort of. Uh, street lamps and other things that, uh, that, that, that can charge. Um, so in the procurement that we're looking at is to make it so there's not cables running everywhere and people falling over and, and those sorts of things. So a fair, um, fair point. Park and ride. So there's the park and ride scheme that's going in for the hospital over in the west of the city. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to drink some tea. Uh, which is related to people coming in using and uh, using the hospital. We haven't got any concrete plans for park and ride at the minute, but what I call proper park and ride, because there were some previous park and ride plans that were temporary. They were weekend only with a uh, small number of spaces that really wouldn't have solved the problem. Our big push for public transport is on trains. So currently we have eight train stations, Millbrook, well, Redbridge, Millbrook, City Centre, St. Denis, Swaveling, um, Bitten, and Wollstone and Showland. But the service is every hour. If you want to loop them and it's it's poor, if we could get that to every half an hour, we could significantly increase the movement of people on the trains. And we're working on that that project. We're also then looking at mass transit, um, so trams or something similar. We we people are going to drive. We're that sort of city. We want to offer them some alternatives to not have to use their car. Um, walking, cycling, bus is part of that. E-scooters, water taxis, but also real proper mass transit that people can use to get round um, and that is something that we're working on. Specifically on park and ride though, we don't have any firm concrete plans right now beyond the uh, hospital uh, plans that are in, but we are talking to partners about if there's something we can do, excuse me, to do a proper long-term park and ride that doesn't require millions of pounds of public subsidy as well. Uh, so thank you Kate. Thank you Kim. Uh, Charlotte Forder, Ah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you for doing this. My question is about recycling. In light of recent or renewed focus on sustainability, are any plans to renegotiate remaining waste management contracts and expand the recycling service? Would be grateful to know one if you have planned. Yeah. So our recycling rates, Charlotte, as a city, are not good. Um, they are the second worst in Hampshire, and they're amongst the worst in the country. Um, so we're not recycling uh, no, anywhere near enough. Um, and we have a lot of contamination, so people putting stuff in the recycling bin and then not all of it being recyclable. So we are tied into a contract. This is the slightly technical bit, but we'll overcome that in a second. I'll talk about how we're dealing with it. So we are tied, in, tied into a contract um, with the rest of Hampshire that was signed in the 90s. At the time, it was a really thought-leading, innovative, in, you know, in, innovation-led uh, project. Time's moved on. It hasn't kept up pace. You can't recycle as many pots and plastic things in Hampshire as other places can. Um, so the government actually is just, uh, the environment bill has just gone through, uh, has become law, uh, it's now the Environment Act. Uh, and what that is that by 2024, we should have a system where we're recycling an awful lot more. So we'll have new bins, um, the, the Environment Act then says we will be, they, that we have to collect more types of plastic, more products and recycle. So our recycling rates will go up as a result of that. But that's obviously 2024, which given the pledges of COP26 and the fact that it's 2021, we want to do something before then. So the, the landscape is changing because there's a new act of parliament coming through and we're responding to that. We will be putting in more, um, more recycling uh, available and we will be collecting more and we will be recycling more. Um, and it's likely that uh, and food waste will be part of that. But that's in 2024. In the meantime, we've got to sort out why our recycling rates are, are so low. And part of that is because we've got a lot of blocks in the city where recycling isn't that easy. We have, as a council, a lot of council blocks that we need to work with our housing teams with. We need to invest in the service. So 
the waste team don't really have much support in terms of um, education and supporting people and going around and advising people. So there's a whole plan, waste improvement plan that we're coming up with right now. You would have seen that we have got driver shortages as well. So we're not able to collect all the bins on time, which obviously, uh, certain, well, glass bins, uh, uh, is, a, is a difficulty for us and not where we want to be. So we're being really real about where we are right now. Our priority is to make sure all the bins are collected first. So we're recruiting new drivers, we're upskilling our drivers, we're investing more in the service to get that right. Then once that's calmed down a little bit and we've got enough team, then we want to look at how do we then start recycling more. But frankly, there's not been enough money and investment and support gone into the waste service. And we've start, we've inherited a bit of a situation where things are not working properly. Our priority is to get it working properly invest in the service then build it up and that's what we're doing and that will include then doing more educational pieces working with private landlords and public ourselves as a landlord in one part of the council to make sure that our residents are aware and those that are contaminating that we actively work with them to stop it not to get too technical but recycling has two edge cost to us so when we sell recyclables when you recycle them and we sell them we get some money for it so if we're not recycling we're not selling the product, we're not getting money for it, and that's money for the taxpayer to put in services. But the flip side of it, if we're not recycling and then it's going to incineration, we've got to pay for it. So actually, it's really important from an environmental point of view, but also investing in the city and having funds available for the council that we get people recycling and our current rates aren't good enough. So we've got a short-term plan, medium plan, and then we're working for the Government's Environment Act, which will change things. Hopefully that answers your question, Charlotte. Um, Michael M. Besant, uh, Michelle, sorry, my the screen is quite small. <laughs> so Michelle Besant, um, talking about parking, verges and green space, shouldn't the council be looking at ways residents of Southampton would reduce their car use by improving public transport? As I'm sure nobody wants Southampton to become a concrete jungle. Thank you, Michelle. Um, we absolutely are. So we're encouraging people to use more forms of public transport and we're gonna do that by improving public transport buses, um, walking, cycling, e-scooters, taxis, uh, water taxis. Um, and as I said previously, trams, trains, a form of mass transit to move people around. But what we can't move away from is in the estates in our city, there are lots of people who have a car, rightly, um, who, who don't have access to public transport or who choose to have a car, which is entirely fine. And they're parking currently in muddy messes that are you know, they don't have a, they're to park, they're parking on grass verges or they're parking in spaces where there isn't any space or, or the, the mud is all churned up. People are then not able to know when to go out and when to come home and they can't park or they get a delivery and the delivery gets stuck in the mud. All these things are going on. So I think it's important that where people have got cars and they're in our estates and we're their landlord, some of them, or we are the council that looks after the green space. The green space isn't green. Most of it is muddy, churned up mess that could actually be grass created rather than concrete with some new trees, electric vehicle charging point, and a real opportunity to tidy up that area, provide some more parking, and also help neighbourly environment. Because I know for some of my residents uh, that I've spoke to in Harefield and we spoke to across the city, um, not knowing when you, where you, if you can park when you come home or if someone else is going to take your parking space is a real issue. So we need to encourage people we will encourage people and we'll have alternatives but we also need to support those that should have somewhere to park and are our tenants and feel that you know the help the space outside their house looks really messy just churned up because there's nowhere to park um natalie russ i think right oh why have the bins in the oaks merry oak been left for over a week now with the general waste bins not being collected we keep we keep being promised some day same day collections there are now rubbish all in the road as bags right okay natalie that's not acceptable um we should be just give me two seconds we should be up to together with our domestic waste collections um uh, Give me a second. I'm just reading through the information that I have. Yeah, your your domestic waste, your normal bin, as you're saying, should be collected. So 
Uh, I'm going to ask the customer services team or the team here pick that up with you. The glass collections are sometimes falling behind and then we're picking them back up again. But obviously that that isn't the case here. Your general waste bin, as you say, hasn't been collected. Um, let's uh, I'll get the team to get on that for you. Um, uh, I know last week we didn't manage to collect all the uh, domestic bin wastage, but my understanding that was in the uh, just give me a second. That was in the west of the city rather than the east, which is where you are. So we'll get the team on that to come back to you and get that sorted out. Hopefully that helps. Thank you, Natalie, for your patience. And thank you, everyone, for your patience with us on waste. We are recruiting. We're upskilling. Uh, but we, we went into this situation uh, and found ourselves as a new council in a position where we didn't have enough resource. And so we're putting the resource in and, and doing the best we can to, to get on track. <clears throat> um, Penny, another question on shoaling. No problem, Penny, if I can answer you. Um, on the cemetery website, it says to park in Central Road, but people park on all the footpaths. Could signage be put in the cemetery, or removal bollards be put up so funeral directors can act? Yeah, uh, sounds pretty sensible. I can't, I can't say I know the specific, I obviously know Butts Road, I know where you are, I know the junction, but I don't know all the specifics. Um, in the cemetery. So, Penny, I'm going to ask the team to pick that up um, and, and pick it up with your ward councillors as well, uh, which is uh, Marley Guffrey, Sarah Vaughan, and James Bailey, who are in my team, uh, Conservative team. Um, and uh, we will see what can be done there. But yeah, fair point. I don't know the I, I don't know all the details of the specifics, but I completely understand your point. Uh, and sensible point. So let's let's come back to you on that one, Penny. Thank you for, for raising. Um, Becky Painton, Stoneham Cemetery Road, Swaveling, could do a speed reduction of five to twenty mile. That was recent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Becky. So. Yeah, you'll be a, you, you've, you've applied for the 20 mile an hour zone. So we, as a new council, we're rolling out the 20 mile, well, we'll be rolling out the 20 mile an hour zones and we are, but we're doing the application process and in, uh, declarations of people that are interested at the moment. So we will be rolling those out, uh, certainly in Swaveling area and Pear Tree, uh, Bassett um, and all over the city. But we've sort of, we're tying them in with other work that we've got going on. So if we're repairing a road or we're doing some road safety measures, Let's do all the work at the same time so that we can maximize the investment and also minimize the disruption. So I'm glad to see that you've advertised. Uh, that's good to hear. And, and the team will come back to you through the uh, advertising process and ranking. Thank you for doing that. Um, uh, Natalie, uh, yeah. We keep getting replies to say that's being sought. Appreciate you for Yeah, general waste is the priority, Natalie. Um, you're absolutely right. So I'm advised, and I can only go on the information I have, is that we have caught up on all of our domestic bins. So I don't know why you um, haven't got your domestic bin. So we are prioritizing domestic bins across the city and should have them all collected. And then we are then also going out every day and obviously collecting glass and sometimes we're falling behind and then we're catching up. But absolutely right, your domestic bin is the priority you, and yours and others. Um, so that's what I say, the team will pick up with you and we can get this sorted out. Um, Michelle Besant, are you also going to look at your drop curb policies? Your own policy advises Burgess trees shouldn't be removed, but they are being. That's a good point, Michelle. We, I haven't, yeah, honestly, I haven't read the policy. Um, for drop curbs. Um, we work with Balfour BT, our partner, uh, advises the tree shouldn't be removed, but they are being. Yeah, generally speaking, so we have a sort of policy of if, we, if a tree gets removed, you replace it with two or three more. Um, any, we won't really, we, we probably won't be removing any trees in the green, um, in the parking space. Uh, proposals or, or definitely trying to minimize and if we do we'll be replacing them with more and we're going to be replacing we're going to be putting in more and literally before this meeting I just had a conversation with the team about how many new trees that we can plant 
Um, so I'll ask the team to pick that up, to have a look at that for you. But we are very, very pro planting and greening the city. And indeed, you know, we want to green the city significantly because we've got a lot of urban infrastructure in the middle of the city, a lot of concrete, looks very urban, that we want to make it a lot greener. And in the estates, with the parking schemes, this is a really good opportunity to do it. But, but I can't answer you specifically because I, I, I don't know. Um, but thank you for, for bringing that to our attention. Um, Charlotte um, Forder, thank you for your response. Appreciate the realism and that you are in a difficult place with driver recruitment, COVID challenges, supporting the institution. Thank you, Charlotte. That's very, very helpful and kind of you. Yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're trying to be as open as we can and say, look, we've got these challenges. We're trying to invest in the service, um, really invest in our staff. So today I was also with our parks and open spaces and flight tipping team uh, talking to them and they drive smaller trucks much smaller so they're sort of uh, nowhere near the, the the bin size we're doing a lot of work in our parks you know covid there was a lot of people using the parks we've invested a lot of money extra money in there uh, recruiting eight new posts for the parks the open spaces keeping them tidy and also forcing fly tipping um but there's there's a lot of complicated stuff going on here in waste um and with a new bill environment act coming out we're trying to look at how do we keep the city clean and tidy but also do it financially in a way that, that works. And fly tipping is a massive problem that we will be going out and clearing up a lot of fly tipping, but we don't mind clearing it up. But of course, if it gets back there the next day, you just create more of a problem. So thank you for your understanding. We, we, are, um, we are on it uh, every day. And certainly in waste trying to um, get, get the team uh, the support they need and get the drivers in place so that we can make sure we can collect all the bins every day. Thank you. Uh, Ali Jonah, we have a lot of problems in Southampton with park, parks and roads. All roads has been closed. Um, I think you're probably meaning um, that we're doing a lot of road works, Ali, which we are. Um, so this is the flip side. <laughs> this is the, the negative to doing loads of road works and repairing loads of roads that need repairing is that they're shut for a period of time. Um, and certainly in the city centre, we're trying to significantly improve the flow of traffic so that the cars and the buses and cyclists and pedestrians can get around on the pavements and the roads. Um, but that means we've got a shut road sometimes to do that. So I think that's what you're picking up on. Um, mm -hmm. Please come back to us or put in a further comment if, if that wasn't what you meant. Uh, Luke Wolf, when's the old patrol going to come through Fawn Hill and replace the curb stones that fall out because you won't put tarmac down and they just leave concrete base as the roads? So Luke, I'm not sure which road you're on. If you want to let us know, we can let you know. We've repaired um, 1,300 uh, potholes over the last few months. Uh, they're all over the city. So we have a north team, or sorry, a central team, an east team and a west team. So the east team would be with you in Fawn Hill. Um, we are then also replacing a large number of roads. Um, and, and a lot of those are in the estates. Um, so uh, in Western Estate, we recently did King's Clear, and a lot, of, as you'll know, a lot of them are concrete, as you were saying here, the concrete roads are then being replaced with proper tarmac. So let us know which road you're on, Luke, and we can let you know, and if um, get the pothole team down there if needed um, as well. Uh, Natalie, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for your patience, and thanks for um, taking the time to, to come along this evening. Uh, Ali Jana, why Southampton City Council don't care about public? Shirley Min Road is closed, Romsey Road is closed. Yeah, Ali, um, I, I get what you mean. Like I, I think I just said, we're, we are repairing a lot of roads and pavements and main routes into the city, and that obviously has an impact. Um, we're trying to do that so we can get the road surface in a good quality. Uh, obviously, sometimes there'll be last minute repairs from the utility companies, but generally a lot of the road closures at the minute are us investing in the road network. Um, I appreciate it's a bit frustrating. I, I, I know it is, but we're trying to get the roads up to scratch so that people can move around. Um, Luke Wolf, sorry, Wolf. Uh, when are we going to stop piling money into bus routes like the waste of money to move the bus stops into the middle of the roads? You've made nothing but more traffic and more pollution. No one or one person gets on the bus. Yeah, thank you, Luke. So 
you'll know that you might know we've, we we the conservative team have run the council since may um i think you're referring to uh bus lanes so we um took the decision to remove the bitten bus lane when we came into office in may june because its intention was you know legitimate intention to encourage people to use the bus um more but the impact was that we reduced the main route into the west the east of the city the cars were queuing up for longer there was more pollution and more congestion and there weren't the proper supply of buses for people to be able to actually get on it so we're trying to take a pragmatic approach um we've we're stopping uh the policy of bringing bus stops into the middle of the road if there's a two-lane road and then bringing the bus lane the bus stop into the middle of the road so the road goes in and narrow and back round again we're stopping that um because it is Shirley High Street is a classic where there used to be bus laybys. Now there are no laybys, and when the bus stops, all the roads, all the cars stop, and all the traffic stops, the cyclists and everything, and it all grinds to a halt. That wasn't our policy, um, and it's not our policy, and it's not something that we support because of the, the reasons that you say. What we're trying to do is make sure that if you've got a car, a taxi, a bus, a mini bus, a school bus. Um, or a cyclist or someone walking, you can get round. Otherwise, you've just got traffic everywhere, polluting the city, causing delays, causing cost. Um, and we want people to be able to move around freely. And that's why we're investing in public transport and mass transit, uh, whether that be trams or trains, but also e-scooters and water taxis and everything else. Um, uh, Ali Jonah again, Cats have up to an all road are closed. They are making small road. And why are the council not, not caring about this? There isn't a lot of car parks too. So Ali, I think I'm picking up on what you mean about the road closure, which I think I've answered. We, we do have quite a lot of car parking in the city center and district centers. All, in fact, some would argue we have too much. Um, uh, so I, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but there is a lot of parking space available for people to, to be able to bring the car in um, if you choose to do so. Um, but I think I think I've answered your question. Uh, Amy, thank you. I've reported issues about the parking on Bowworth Avenue plenty of times in the last year. If we aren't on the list, there are green birds on the road and large green spaces at the top of the hill would help to mark out car parking spaces in the lay-by, people not parking considerately in the lay-by is an issue. Yeah, well, well, thanks, Amy. Um, in all honesty, probably one of the things that's going, there's an awful lot going on at the minute. So I'll sense check that you're on the list, um, Bowworth, uh, and we'll find out. But you're right, you have got green verges that could be used. It's whether it just brings any more space or frees up the road. So we'll, we'll check that. But I know around you is, um, uh, and we're working on the list at the moment. Um, Matthew Lydiard, what are you planning to do about the motorbikes to ride on the lawn? Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Really good question. Um, so we met yesterday, it's Tuesday today, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yesterday, Monday evening with Donna Jones, who's the Police and Crime Commissioner for Hampshire and this, uh, uh, the uh, Superintendent, the District Commander for Southampton, Simon Dodds, to specifically talk about dirt bikes and dirt bikes in relation to mainly on the west of the city, Redbridge, Redbridge, Millbrook Estate, Lords Hill. So there's several things that we're looking at doing. One of them, as we talked about the community fund, so that's about putting money into uh, community groups to divert people to do more positive things. Or if we're catching people, and we might not always have enough, um, enough evidence to prosecute, but you kind of know they've been doing something they shouldn't have been doing. How do we divert them into doing something more positive? So that's what the community fund is for. The other thing is, is then what can we, what are we, what can we do to stop the routes that they're using in the woods, getting into the woods? So that's about bollards or hard engineering, uh, not it, not concrete over things and stop, you know, make it really look re really urban. But actually, can we put some bollards in, or can we put some railings in? Can we put some um, very um, discreet uh, um, sort of stuff that can be used even if it's woods or trees or planting more trees that stops people from being able to get on this land and that's what we're looking at at the moment and we're going through that with the police so we're going to sense check with all of our partners um, and understand where the key problem sites are and then come up with a plan to address them 
So we're in that sort of, win we understand the problem, we're identifying the sites and then bring forward the solutions for them, Matthew. Um, that's what we're working on with the police and our teams at the moment. Um, just seen your, oh, this, uh, I've realized there might be uh, relatives here, there might not be, but we had Matthew Lydiard and we've now got John Lydiard, which is what confused me. Simple things confuse me sometimes. Um, when walking through the precinct, the buskers are so loud with amplifiers. I'm not against busking, but are there? I, I don't think there are, John, any any rules around how loud. I think there's more uh, the police, the community support officers take a bit of a view. Um, I think we want to really create a nice environment. And the music is, I get your point. I, I, I mean, the music is good fun. Sometimes you've got people doing different things and expressing their art forms and giving a bit of life and character to the city and district centres, um, which we want, but also we want it to be in a way that it's not overpowering. So I think, I don't think there's any specific rules, but it is about on the day people, you know, the, the police or the council teams that are present, just making sure things aren't too loud. Um, but we're very keen on promoting uh, busking and street art regulated, um, so that adds a bit of character and fun to uh, our city centre. Uh, Donny Crook, Donny, our waste bin hasn't been emptied for a week now. When do you suppose? Right, Donny, can you let us know where you are and we'll tell you why and when it will be done? Um, there shouldn't be, um, that shouldn't be the case. Uh, so we're behind on glass, but my understanding is, as I said earlier to um, the lady, uh, Natalie, um, that we are up together on general waste so please let us know in here or the team will follow up with you for specifics and we'll get that sorted uh teresa thomas i was wondering admiring the plants on the walls at redbridge roundabout the other day are there any plans to do put up more absolutely teresa this is something we're working on we want to really green as much as we can um we've got a lot of concrete whether that be roads or buildings or or urban areas so we're working on a plan now to, to, to more wild meadow flowers uh, more greening of uh, walls the teams are working on this um uh, uh and we'll be coming up with more plans over the next few months but we're definitely definitely more of that uh definitely definitely good question thank you uh nick chaffee hello nick uh why not run a free bus service if you want to reduce car pollution and congestion how much are you giving to city bus and stagecoach um so our uh i think you probably mean in in our bus subsidies our bus subsidies are quite low uh as a city the new bus service improvement partnership is about running new routes um you know we don't own any buses and we're not going to be buying buses to run free services but we will be running we will be working closer under the bus service improvement partnership with bus companies to put on services where there aren't currently services so my ward is one of them in the harefield estate Uphill Lane is another area that's not easily covered and the east to the west or, or shoaling across Harefield, parts of Thornhill, through Bitten and over to the city centre, Uphill Lane and to the hospital are not overly well connected at the moment. So those are the things that we'll be looking to do. But we, we won't be running a free service, um, but we will be working with the bus companies to see how we can help them make them commercial. Uh, and the new changes mean an awful lot more improvements with um, the uh, integrated ticketing system and more digital displays, better improvements um, and fixed fares that will be set differently to how they are at the moment. So you, uh, you've probably seen the bus service improvement plan. If you haven't, it's worthwhile having a good look through it. Just conscious that we've been going for about 45 minutes and there are lots of good questions coming in. So I'm probably gonna do about 10, 10 to about quarter past, uh, seven just to compensate for the fact that we started a bit late and we've got loads coming in here um vicky diamond when are the police going to close down the drug dealing in the car park behind bitten park social club vicky don't know about it specifically um myself can ask the team to pick that up with you and we can go to the police and ask them what they're doing about it not a problem i can't give you a straight answer because i i don't know um, and obviously we you know the police will need to make sure there's the evidence but you probably have may have been involved in sort of communicating with them so happy to pick that up with you one of the team will pick up with you um 
Donny Crook, the binman told me today we got missed because the driver refused to drive down our road. Right. Well, Donny, I, I can't I can't comment on that. As you know, uh, we run the service day in, day out, every week every, of the year, um, and we do our best to make sure people's bins get collected. Maybe it was tongue in cheek, I don't know, but we'll make sure your bin gets collected and ultimately you know, our teams do a really good job and done a lot of good work during COVID, as many people did on the front line. Um, they may have been having a bad day or, or maybe someone's pulling your leg or or maybe they're telling the truth, which we'll look at um, for you. But if you can let us know your address, the team can pick up with you and get that sorted. Uh, you just said we've also got no hope until next Tuesday. Well, we'll pick that up with you, um, Donny, on the, on the bins. Um, he's now... Tuesday this week, so we should be going out and collecting the bins, but we also need to make sure that it was missed from the rounds and where you are. So if you can let us know where you are and the team will pick that up. Uh, Becky, thanks for the reply. Two positives I'd like to say thanks to Council for. Firstly, the closure of roads around primary schools in the mornings and afternoons. This is fantastic to say, so safe for children. Secondly, the wildflowers and grassy areas that were left for bees and butterflies last spring, summer, definitely saw a massive increase walks around locally, dragonflies really thrive this year. So thank you, Becky. Yeah, no, I mean, we're really, really keen. So around schools, what we want to be doing is creating these safer streets. And we also then want to be investing in the 20 mile an hour zones and really in our residential areas, making the streets safe. Um, and the green, <clears throat> uh, greening and wildflowers, we are really ramping that up. So could doing yeah more for the bees, wildflowers, you know, post COVID, the parks, everyone loves our parks um, uh, and, um really investing in those and showing what we can do we used to have a lot of color in our parks and i appreciate you know that costs quite a bit of money but we want to see how much more color we can get and how much we can really grow our park offer and really show what our city can be like because of the mental the good mental well-being that parks give and the fact that we've got loads of green spaces to make the most of so um thank you kim ailing Hello again, Kim. Interested to know your aspirations for Bitten shopping and leisure facilities for future now previous plans scrap. Yeah, so this is the Bitten Hub proposals, Kim, that you're mentioning. So the Bitten Hub proposals were about spending about 30 million of public money on one building. Um, that was the council spending that money in Bitten. We're not, we're not scrapping the concept of investing in Bitten uh, and the leisure and the facilities. We're just looking at what we can do without spending 30 million pounds. Um, so you would have seen the new investment from uh, gone into the, the old Sainsbury's, um, creating a bit of a creative, funky uh, place, which is which is cool. So we're looking at what's needed there. The police station will reopen in Bitten uh, next year, um, next summer. Uh, and in all that, we want to, we're working on that at the minute. So we haven't got a prescriptive plan. We're canvassing for opinion, working with partners to understand, working with public, we will be to come forward with a plan. But, you know, 30 million pounds was a lot of public money that we feel we could better spend on roads and pavements and investing in Mayflower Park and other areas. Um, so that's why the Bit and Hub proposals uh, are not going ahead in the way they were, but that doesn't mean to say that we will not be doing anything there and we're working on that proposal at the minute. <clears throat> Jacob Povell, uh, is there any plan to start recycling different materials, plastics rather than bottles? We used to be able to drop them off items in Portsmouth, but the bins were taken away. Yeah, Jacob, thanks. I, I, I spoke earlier to um, uh, a, a young lady, um, just trying to remember her name, um, Charlotte, uh, about uh, recycling. So there's an awful lot going on in recycling. New Environment Act coming uh, in 2024, where we'll be recycling a lot more. In the meantime, we need to get our waste service back on its feet. But yes, we will be recycling more. Uh, over the next few years. Um, but first, our top priority right now is to make sure we collect the bins, make sure we've got enough staff, really get the service, bin service back on its feet and make sure it's delivering. But the straightforward answer to your question is yes. Linda Taylor, sort out the people that park on the road on Shirley High Street going into the shops. It's causing problems when trying to pass. Um, why will no one meet with me in regards to the jobs I've asked about to be done and as of yet, nothing has been done. So, Linda, I think we'll, we can pick up with you on, on the jobs um, piece if you, one of the team will pick up with you. Um, uh, the Shirley High Street is complicated um, in terms of parking on the pavements and parking. We are looking at that. That's not in our short-term plans because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, 
but Councillor Moulton, who's a cabinet member, and I have talked about it. Um, once we've got some of these other projects out of the way, we are looking at, is there something we could do on Shirley? But just to manage expectations, we're not, we're not there at the minute. But the team can pick up on you on the jobs you're asking about and, if, and make sure that they're picked up on. Um, I'm going to answer a few more. Uh, when looking at the adult social care budget, uh, LinkedIn user, understanding it's a huge part of council spend. What is the future spend like? 2022 onwards. So yeah, adult social care is a huge part of the council's budget. In, in, in fact, actually, it's the biggest part of the council's budget. Um, so it's around 80 odd million pounds that we spend on looking after adults working in health, social care uh, for adults um, and the elderly and a, a whole range of disability supports, an awful lot there. So we, we're basically saying, right, we want to invest in this service. We want to get the relationships between our carers and our users and those people that need us day in, day out, much better than what they are at the minute. So we'll be continuing to spend good amounts of money in that area. We are asking them to bring forward savings where they can so we can reinvest it into the service. Um, so spend will be you know, going up, but actually we're trying to be as efficient as we can in those areas uh, of adults and social care. And with the new very complicated piece this, but with the new health and social care budgets um, coming and the wider changes, there's an awful lot going on here that we want to make sure we're getting really good value for you, the taxpayer, and delivering a good service. So um, more of the same, but also real long-term investment and driving out costs where we can so we can improve services. Uh, young M. Martin, if there was more for the kids to do and the police didn't make it again by chasing putting points on their license taken away before they've ever got them. There should be more for them to do. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what the community fund is about, giving giving charities and organisations in the community money to be able to do stuff with young people so they don't end up doing things they shouldn't be doing. Um, and not all of them, you know, that's a small number, but actually giving them something positive to be able to do. So we're, um, uh, we're on that, um, but uh, that, that's the plan. Um, uh, Ali Haydor, hello Ali, unfortunate recent decision by, <laughs> yes, I know, I, I know this is a big issue to you, door signage. Um, as I said to you uh, privately, you know, we, the decision was made by the licensing panel. We're, we're not going to be overturning that, but we are keeping this under review um, and we're aware of the uh, employment rights issue that um, you and, and I know I'll be coming back to you privately to pick up to have a conversation. So, um, I'll pick that up with you, Ali. Thank you. Um, Michael Jones, Madison Avenue. I'm not sure what that means, Michael, sorry. Um, Donnie has just mentioned that uh, where he is, so that's good we can pick up with that. Uh, Ali's agree with 20 mile an hour plan. Thank you, Ali. Um, thank you, Michelle, about the Bitten plan. So, as I said, we're working on a plan for Bitten. Um, we put, we're putting investment into the roads and the pavements around, and we'll be putting investment into the place. But, you know, 30 million is a large amount of public money, and we think we can get more uh, out of that rather than just spending money on, on a new building. And that's what we're working on at the minute. Um, Linda, why can't the Binman do split shifts as my partner sees them going home from 2 p.m.? Okay, I know they have been out from. Yeah, so Linda, thank you. We we are, some are doing overtime, so some are coming back and back out again, and we have got people doing shifts all over the place to catch up. Um, you're, you, with HGVs, though, there are a limited number of hours that people can drive them, um, and that actually has perpetuated some of the problems that we've seen over the last 10 years. In, so the HGV challenge has been an issue more recently, but there has been a shortage brewing for a number of years because of the number of hours, <laughs> rightly so, that people can drive. And we just have never had enough people to, to do that. Um, uh, right, I'm going to take the last question now, and then any that haven't been answered, um, the team will pick up with you. Um, so I'm going to take Christine Wallace as the last question. Um, the road outside Bassett Green School has been extremely dangerous due to parking and congestion. There's been a number of incidents. It has been previously suggested it should be made a one-way street during school drop-off. What was the reason against this? It would be much safer. Right, Bassett Green School. Um, 
bring it up on the map. I know where most things are, but just to refresh the memory till I get it right. Uh, yeah, you are on honeysuckle, so you're in the flower gardens, aren't you? Yeah. Um, there, I know we were doing some stuff around Cantel, some of the safer streets around Cantel School up the road. I'm not sure where we are on Bassett Green School, in honesty, Christine. Perhaps you, one of the team RN can pick that up with you and we can come back to you. Um, as I think I've said a couple of times, there's a new council, so we've been running the council as a conservative team since May. So it may have been before the change that things got stopped. Um, I'm not familiar with your project, sorry, your proposals and the proposal there. So um, we can come back to you with the detail. And on that, I'm going to um, say thank you to everybody that has commented and questions this evening. I think we've managed to get through um, most of them. Um, the team will pick up on any. Uh, Ali's just mentioned any plans for the future of Royal Pier. Yes, Ali, we're working on plans for Mayflower Park, Royal Pier, that part of the waterfront. It will be a big part of, of our council's priorities and is. And I think we're going to come forward with something really exciting there. Um, the Royal Pier, obviously we're looking at the Spitfire, well, we're going to be doing the Spitfire Memorial and uh, Mayflower Park. So watch this space on Royal Pier. Um, Excellent. Well, thank you all for coming along. Thank you for being polite and, and uh, understanding and asking your questions. This is something that we're doing uh, monthly um, uh, across uh, across the council. So we'll be doing, sorry, across the city. Uh, so we'll be doing these um, uh, sorts of sessions more regularly. So we're doing the monthly Facebook Live. We're looking at doing them with other platforms and then changing it around a little bit. But really appreciate you all coming along this evening, asking your questions, being very patient. Um, and uh, and being understanding and being polite as well. So that's very much appreciated. And anyone's questions who haven't been picked up, the team will pick up and come back to you. So thank you for listening. Take care of yourself. Keep safe. And uh, bye for now. See you soon.